Here's this week's My Boat feature. Quite a few viewers have emailed us about doing a segment on inboard transmission, maintenance and service. So this week on My Boat, we're going to dive right into the subject. One of the most important maintenance tasks is ensuring that the fluid levels are correct. To check the level, the engine must be run at a fast idle of 1500 RPM for two minutes to warm the transmission fluid. When warm, idle back and shut down and immediately pull the dipstick to verify the level. If you wait, fluid will drain back from the transmission cooler and give you a false high reading. Enough can't be said about regular fluid changes. The only way to completely drain the fluid is to disconnect the lower transmission cooler line and remove the fitting. Once drained, reattach and fill the tranny with the spec amount for the unit and run the engine and check the levels and top up is required. So what if you're having a problem? In the case of this boat, the prop was continuing to turn while in neutral as shown by the water flowing from the stern while tied to the dock. To try a fix for this, remove the shift cable and ensure that the shifting linkage on the transmission is shifting to the neutral detent position. If adjusting the cable and linkage doesn't help, something else is wrong. If you do diagnose a problem that you can't fix in the boat, there really is only one thing you can do. Let's get your boat out of the water, get the transmission out, and take it to the experts. So we're going to tackle that next. If you're pretty hands-on on your boat, you can save some expense by preparing your engine for removal yourself and contract your marina crew to hoist the engine and transmission out. Now that I have the engine and transmission package back in the shop, it's time to separate the transmission and take it to the experts. Separating the drain transmission begins with disconnecting the cooler lines, sensor wire, neutral safety switch wires, and removing the shift linkage. There is one trick to splitting the transmission from the engine. Remove the lower two bolts and replace them with longer bolts so the transmission can be eased back off the spline without damaging it. Then remove the remaining mounting bolts. Using a hydraulic jack or engine hoist, slide the transmission back on the long carrier bolts until the input shaft clears the spline. Supporting the transmission, finally remove the carrier bolts. Well, with the transmission removed from the engine, we've traveled to Wheatley, Ontario to Anthony Keats, the specialist for velvet drive transmissions, to have a look what's wrong and see if our diagnosis is right and get it fixed. Dan Vickery's first task was to split the back half or V-drive and main transmission sections. Next, the main case was opened up in stages to access the reverse clutch plates and clutch pack. The reverse plates looked fine, so the problem was in the main clutch pack. A clutch pack in good shape, the input shaft spins freely inside the drum. In this situation here, it doesn't. it's all locked so up. That's what we thought, warped and overheated clutches. Yep. There are some tricks to opening up the clutch pack and removing the intermediate shaft. But once the clutch plates were out, it was evident that they had warped from overheating. Having found the problem, Dan tore down every part in the main section and cleaned up all of the parts. First to be reassembled was the clutch pack with alternating brass and steel plates. After the remaining parts were installed, the piston was pressed back in place. Next, the intermediate shaft and gears were inserted and the end plate installed. In reverse order, the main unit was reassembled using all new seals and gaskets. Although the problem was in the shifting section, since the two sections share common oil, Anthony Keats always tears down the V-drive half to clean and inspect every part to ensure no debris has damaged any parts. After cleaning and inspection, it was reassembled and the V-drive was mated to the main section on the test bed. Hooked up to a transmission cooler and full of fluid, Dan tested the transmission for shifting, vibration and oil pressure before he was ready to release it from the shop. Back at our shop, we reinstalled the transmission by first blocking it in place, then installing the long carrier bolts to guide the transmission forward as the shaft was inserted into the spline. Once in place, the housing bolts were tightened, then torqued to mercury specs. To ensure that the transmission stays cool, a new transmission cooler was installed and new lines attached from the cooler to the transmission. Well, transmission's back on the engine, the cooler's in, the lines are hooked up, so all we have left to do is fill it with fluid and get it back in the boat. 